Oh, hey guys. How are you guys doing today? Well, welcome to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the 10 most common mistakes I see metal detectorists make. And the very first one we're going to start with, number one, is the reason why we started detecting. Common mistake is the reason. Do you really think you're going to get rich and wealthy? Jim isn't rich and wealthy. He's been doing it for 30 some odd years. Though I have a good collection and I'm building a good retirement and I've found a lot of good finds. But uh, there's enough YouTube channels out here guys that you should understand your expectations. You see guys, you know guys, that trying to make a living metal detecting. So if your expectations are to get wealthy, this is not the sport for you. This isn't the hobby for you, okay? What's the reason you want to be a metal detectorist? If it's anything other than you're an enthusiast and a hobbyist, that's uh, a good thing. If you're thinking that you're going to get wealthy and find lots of treasures and get lots of gold and lots of silver, you may. You're going to have to hunt a lot. And I can tell you, I've hunted a lot. And many a times, I have found absolutely nothing. But I loved and enjoyed every bit of that hunt. Okay, hey, common issue number two I see all the time is the coil. Yep, that's my ring there. The coil cable is not correctly wrapped. It's too loose. And if the cable is too loose and it's not correctly wrapped, all right, then it falsely causes this thing to vibrate over the coil and you will actually pick up the metal from this. You want it fairly loose. See, this can go up and down. But notice it's got that little springy action the way I have it. And that's because up here, I kind of tighten it a little bit. Just like that. When I need to loosen it down a little bit, I just push it down a little bit. What you don't want it to do is when you're swinging it back and forth, is it flopping around. See how my coil wire is a little bit loose here? I did that on purpose. And it's see how I have it just loose enough to where as I move this thing can move but it stays snug see what I mean it's not bouncing back and forth as I swing see what I mean because you will detect that cable right you will detect it so as you swing going back and forth and if it's floppy all right that's not going to help you one bit so my adjustment is just to move that up and then that's it i'm good to go all right everything is super loose i mean this thing is super loose i'm keeping the coil wrapped some people can go straight up the shaft um, but it's each their own don't make the mistake of leaving it too loose or too close to the coil and i always that's that's pretty high up for me right now this is about, uh, that's about how I normally have it. That's about it, all right? And no movement, no floppiness, okay? I see that so often with detectors. And, and of all different types of metal detectors, it's just the way they have it wrapped, and a little bit too loose, and they're wondering why they're missing targets, so. Okay, or getting false readings on things. So, I know that the Sovereign uh, used to loosen up on me. I'd have to readjust it because it's a whole lot longer of a cable. It's number three. Here's the wrong first spot. Guys, you just bought a metal detector. Just came in the mail. You just turned it on. And you're going to a park. Or you're going to the beach. Whatever's closest to your home. All right. 
the beach as close as my home. So I'm brand new at this. I don't know anything about it. I, even Jim, even Jim knows he's not going to go to a park and hit the picnic table area. No, he's going to go in the middle of the park where not a whole lot of activity taking place, but I think there'll be some sounds or some metals out in the middle. This is the first time I'm coming to this park and the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm coming straight to the most dirtiest congested area, even though I got my 15 inch coil. This doesn't make any sense to me. All right, guys, try part of the park that's quiet not the really congested area first now you know that anything near the uh, picnic tables are gonna be nothing but a lot of noise ready let's go through here oh there's a penny but I'm going to fall off a whole lot of different targets here, guys. See what I mean? Should So should you really start out? See what I mean? It's hard to really separate your targets. So this is not the ideal location to start off with. So your first location... Now, you know I like controlled hunts. That should be your first thing to do is you control the hunt. But look at this, I'm just getting away from that picnic table and it's getting a little bit quieter. All right. So guys, the third most common mistake that I see metal detectorists make is starting in the wrong spot when you first get started. For instance, take a look where I'm at, fire pits. You guys know why I like fire pits, right? Because I like to hunt for the fire pit gold. And do you know why I like hunting for fire pit gold? Because this is awful area to metal detect. You can see bottle cap there. And everywhere I move, there's blips and bleeps. I will uh, demonstrate here in a second. But let's talk about this. You just bought yourself a Knox, just like Jim, all right? You threw on the 15 inch coil just like Jim and you cannot wait to get out and use it. So you don't live near a beach, all right? So you go hit the park. Well, are you actually gonna hit the park right next to some of the busiest, most trashiest areas with a 15 inch coil on? Hopefully not. You'll get discouraged awfully quick. Technically, in this area, you can metal detect with a six inch coil and have good success. You'll have quick target identification and very difficult with the 15 inch coil. Now I love the 15 inch coil and I can work it and I can manipulate it and yes, it's gonna be a whole lot easier with the six inch coil. But I will tell you, same thing in a park. When you go there, and you're first starting out, don't go right next to the picnic table where you know all the trash is going to be. Just like if you're starting off on a beach, don't go right next to the fire pits, guys. Don't do that. Because if you're going to do that, this is what you're going to hear. I'm going to take off my earphones right now. Ready? Now you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, why would you as a beginning detectorist want to put yourself through this type of torture? Also, you have options. If you really want to hit your high target, high volume traffic areas, step down your coil size. This is a little six inch. This 11 inch is what comes standard with the Equinox. And of course, you know, I love my 15 inch and I do pretty good with target separation because I do use it a lot. Stay away from the trashy sections on your first hunt. And I'll remind you, it's the best thing you can do is control your first hunt. Number four, 
The fourth common mistake I see is people buy metal detectors, but they live in an area of the world to where they can't metal detect. There's You have to have permission, and you have to have access, and you have to have availability to metal detect. I live in Southern California. you got a lot of parks and beaches. So I can metal detect. I have a buddy who lives in the Midwest that the town is small, has one park. He's metal detected that one already. Okay? There's no BLM land around him that had much activity at all. Okay? So he bought the treasure hunting machine but doesn't have a place to treasure hunt. I don't want that mistake to be made by you guys. So, before you invest a dime in your hobby, make sure you have detectable ground, okay? Number five, guys, is people buying the wrong machine. So how do you know what machine you're gonna need? You need to do the research. What machine works best for you, all right? Nowadays, I recommend one machine for almost everybody, and that's the Equinox. Why? Because right out of the box, you're a pro. It's that easy. Not really, but like, I think it was designed for Southern California beaches, guys. You could literally take an Equinox 600, stick it in Beach One, metal detected dry sand, and at factory settings, because they're almost perfect. The factory settings in Beach One on SoCal Beach, especially Huntington Beach, is perfect okay and for a beginner um, don't go too cheap and that's kind of what I'm trying to hint here if you buy something that isn't easy enough for you to use as a beginner and easy enough for you to learn guys there's a reason the Equinox has got not so many YouTube channels all right but there's other great detectors out there that are a little bit cheaper, all right? And you might want to save a little bit more money. I will tell you, you can't go wrong with an Equinox, but it does have limitations too. Even if you are buying a machine on eBay, okay, which you can find good used machines on eBay, and that goes back to reason number one, people get into the hobby for the wrong reason, so that it sits in the shelf for too long and they realize they can get their money back by selling on eBay. Make sure they have the original receipt and the warranty is still active. I will tell you, unless you're an enthusiast, do not buy a machine out of warranty. They're pickle. They are. Number six. The sixth most common mistake I see metal detectors make is poor technique. I know last week's episode of Tutorial Tuesday we talked a little bit about technique and my technique. But the reason I developed my technique is number one, I want to keep that coil level and flat to the ground. Right? And the other is, I want to be able to swing it all day. I grew up as a teenager swinging the Whites 5900 and the Whites 6000. And then as I moved up, I had the PI 1000. That thing was my water machine, and that's heavy. All right. These machines were heavy. All right. So I learned how to detect with my hips and my chest and my arms. My whole body is like a dance motion when I'm walking out there. I, I just have that flow of rhythm that I just I just can do it all day long. Now with the Equinox in my hand is so much lighter, it makes everything so much easier to detect even for a few more hours longer. Alright. I know that I recently detected with the Sovereign GT not too long ago and I felt a big difference. I didn't notice it before, but now that I'm an Equinox owner, I know the difference. Wow, it's a big difference. Number seven, guys. Number seven is not knowing your machine. You didn't take time to learn your machine. I don't care what machine you have. 
We really don't. Nobody does. It's you who cares about your machine, right? You need to know your machine. Now, I know the Equinox fairly well, but I'm no pro. I would say I'm an advanced intermediate with it, okay? And I still am playing with the FE and the F2 settings at certain locations, and I'm really studying. I'm actually developing a chart, a mathematical chart, to where I can really get down to the nitty gritty between the F2 and the FEs. The key thing is, is I'm still learning my machine. And I think every metal detector is out there, regardless of their skill level, regardless of how long they've had that machine, is still learning their machine. It's just like a doctor. They practice medicine their whole career. That's why it's called a practice and not perfection, right? <laughs> I know many, many metal detectorists that own the Equinox that really don't know anything but the factory preset. And we even have some famous YouTubers that really don't know anything about their Equinox. They just turn it on and they go, right? And that's a nice thing about this technology. You can do that. But I do believe they would find better targets more often if they really knew their machine. So, regardless of whatever machine you have, whatever machine you have, you really need to know it. Play with it. Practice with it. And get to know it. I guarantee you'll be better off. Number eight, guys is using the correct tools. Gosh, man, Jim, you say that in every Tutorial Tuesday. Well, guys, it's so important. Okay, guys, I got a target right here. Yeah. Well, that's not the right tool. All right, guys, I got a target right here. Well, that's not the correct tool. No, I know none of you guys would do that. All right. Now that's the correct tool. Having the correct tool is how you can leave no trace. Was I ever there? See what I mean? And that's leaving no trace. Using the right tools makes it easy to leave no trace. Using the wrong tools it's hard to leave no trace. Number nine. Number nine is very common. Guys get out, they start metal detecting, especially out in the desert, and they forget about their water. They forget to hydrate. They forget the proper nutrition. It's not bringing enough water and not having enough nutrition. I will tell you, I've been out in the desert on a hot day with a group of guys that are sweating up a storm. Now, you know what we were doing the night before, right? Camping out in the desert, hunting for gold is usually drinking beer until you go to sleep, right? <laughs> and then when you wake up in the morning, you have coffee. Alcohol and coffee cause dehydration. So you need to drink water right? You need to hydrate yourself when you are out metal detecting. I hit these beaches on a hot summer day, man, and if I don't have two bottles of water on me, it's not going to be a six-hour hunt. So guys, the tenth and final common mistake I see metal detectorists make is they don't have the patience. This isn't a hobby we can rush. Treasure hunting can't be rushed. 
I will tell you if you slow down, you find your own rhythm, you will find treasure hunting is an adventure. Take the time and enjoy the views. Even though you're going to be looking down at the ground a lot because, you know, you want to find some gold and sometimes it's by eye, right? But you're looking at everything around you. Take in your surroundings. Enjoy it. Have the patience to learn your machine. Have the patience to help other detectorists. Have the patience and the tolerance to deal with the crazy that may be going on around you. Okay, kids at play, somebody cutting you off. I know you've seen some of my videos on a busy day at the beach. I am zigzagging around and in and out of people. I'm trying to avoid them, they're trying to avoid me. It's just the way it is. And any detectorist who is in a rush with a metal detector in hand is going to miss a lot of great treasures. You cannot rush this treasure hunting. There's no fast to this. There's only low and slow, and I don't even want to use the word slow. I want to use the, the word low and steady, because that's really what it is. You develop a pace at your own, and however long you can go at that pace, that's what you do. And if you have patience to learn your machine, even better. So... The tenth most common mistake I see detectorists make is they simply just don't have the patience. And I have a saying that fixes almost all of it. If you don't have patience, you'll become one. Usually in a mental institution, but that's typical for us detectorists. <laughs> Anyways guys, let's select the Would You Dig It winner from last week. Okay guys, got a target here for you. We're in beach one, all metal mode. I'm gonna go 90 degrees. All right, what do you think it is? And you'll win, I think you're gonna win Either a $25 Amazon gift card or a $100 Amazon gift card. Comment below on what do you think it is. Okay, let's dig up this would you dig it. And if you guessed a silver dime, you would be correct. Okay guys, let's pick the winner of the Would You Dig It. Go to my TubeBuddy app, click on pick a winner, comment must contain the words silver dime. Silver Dime, Sega Metal Detecting. Send me an email, which you can find in the About Me section on my channel page, and I will send you out your $25 Amazon gift card. Congratulations, Sega Metal Detecting. Send me an email. You can find that in the About Me section on my channel page, and I will send you out your $25 Amazon gift card. So guys, don't be discouraged, because guess what? We have another Would You Dig It game happening right now for another $25 Amazon gift card. So let's check this out. All right, guys, I have one here for you. I'm in Beach One. We'll go 90 degrees. Oh, 
I'll put it in all metal. And I will pinpoint. Ninety degrees again. So guys, would you dig it? And if you would dig it, comment below. Let me know what you think it is. And you'll have an opportunity to win a $25 Amazon gift card. So guys, would you dig it? I dug it. Would you dig it? So if you dig it, comment below and let me know what you think it is. And you'll have an opportunity to win a $25 gift card that we'll select in next week's episode of Tutorial Tuesday. And guys, if you see a little gemstone like this in any of my videos in the month of March, just remember that is another giveaway. All you need to do is comment on that video and put the timestamp that you saw this gemstone and you will be put into a drawing to win an I dig for you episode. You get to choose the beach that I detect on. You will receive all the trash and all the treasure. If I dig gold, if I dig silver, if I dig platinum, if I find diamonds, if I find a Rolex, it's yours, guys. It's yours. The only exclusion is cell phones. We've already talked about that. I'm excluding all cell phones. But platinum, gold, diamonds, all that belongs to you. And if you want to win that, remember, you're selecting the beach. I'm digging for you, all right? You get to select that beach. And if you want to participate, comment every time you see one of these gemstones in any of my videos in the month of March. And in the first week of April, I will be selecting the winner. And on, on a Friday in April, I will be conducting the I Dig For You episode. So you will choose the beach, and I will give you all the trash and all the treasures. And just in case, because there's times we don't find anything, right guys? That's the honest truth. I'm throwing in a $25 Amazon gift card. So it's a win-win-win for you guys. Win-win-win for you. All right? Just remember, if you like my videos, click on like. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. Ring this bell and receive all the notifications every time I release a new video. And take a look at either one of these videos here. I like this one.